The goal of the 21st century economy should be to meet the needs of all within the means of the planet. We're at a really critical point in history right now in terms of the need to really change our language on climate change. The carbon problem today is going to affect the whole world, the whole population. It's an extraordinary problem statement. Now, what are we going to do? People think of it as a waste gas, as a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide is a wonderful source of carbon. As soon as you think of carbon dioxide as a source of carbon, then your mind, from a chemist's point of view, opens up into a whole new spectrum. We've really got to build critical mass. We've got to join forces. And I see this as one stepping stone towards that outcome. Way back when the Founding Fathers were drawing up the core theories of economics, they thought that land was actually going to be abundant, it was available in the colonies, we could draw from around the world. So they took their eye off land and focused on labour. Today's economy is completely different. We don't have a scarcity of labour, quite the opposite. There are millions of people worldwide who cannot find employment. What we have is a scarcity of living and energy resources. So we have to totally move from chasing labour productivity to chasing resource productivity. And it's the beginnings of reorienting our economy towards preserving and stewarding and reinvesting in Earth systems. I met an economist the other day who had a very delightful way of looking at what we, we're now calling carbon productivity, this idea of looking at the efficient investment of carbon. And he just said very simply, you know, the Industrial Revolution looked after human productivity, it just forgot carbon productivity. You know, it was just a mistake. We didn't think about carbon productivity because we didn't really understand it. Everybody in the economics world, in the policy world, in the business world understands the idea of productivity. This is how much value do you get for how much you put in. And with carbon productivity, the idea is how much value can we create as a society for the amount of fossil fuels we use. This is just a lens for businesses to understand how they can deliver more with less. That carbon maybe isn't such a bad thing after all, and if we use it properly, it really is going to be to our great advantage and to the environment's great advantage. Would you rather be working on a challenge that says, create a product for us that loves carbon and shows that we can solve reverse global warming, or mm, knock off another 10% in terms of the reduction of the carbon footprint of the product? What's more exciting? The climate change debate has been really structured around CO2 and carbon being a problem. Right, and, and a waste. We think of it, you, know, you think of that big picture of a smokestack with, with stuff puffing out the top. And the goals in the climate movement have primarily been around the word stabilization, or reduction, or mitigation, or stopping. The idea of reframing that discussion around what we can actually do with carbon, as opposed to it just being a problem, is a tremendous step forward. And it, that opens the doors to, to huge solutions and, and really galvanizing people around taking a big step in tackling the, the climate change problem. A successful 21st century enterprise is one which will be distributive and regenerative by design in the very essence of what it does. No longer cutting against Earth, drawing from her sources and spewing waste into her sinks, but actually working with the cycles of carbon, of hydrogen, of oxygen, realizing that a successful enterprise will be one that is part of these cycles of the living world. Drawdown in the context of climate change refers to that first point in time when greenhouse gases peak and go down measured on a year-to-year -year basis. In other words, it's the turning point, it's the reversal. I use that term because I feel if you don't name the goal, there's a fat chance you're going to attain it. You just won't reach it because you don't even know where you're going. Over the last year and a half, Interface has named a new mission at the company. We call it Climate Take Back. And it's provocatively named that way for a reason. And by making that a mission and by naming the goal of creating a climate fit for life, we've put carbon front and center in our business. We're going to need innovation in terms of identifying new raw materials that go beyond just being low carbon or carbon neutral, but actually act as carbon sequesterers or carbon storers. Our business in Covestro is all about making very high performance materials. It's taking the industrial revolution, which was all about metals and glass and breakthroughs in processing and human productivity, but very low carbon productivity, and replacing them with newer materials, which are also carbon based, but their carbon productivity is much higher. 
So just changing your ambition and having a little bit of courage and belief can actually shift you from this idea of we can't do anything to starting to see solutions. I'm a big fan on the solution mindset. That's what galvanizes people. That's where, you know, if you're able to get people focused on actually moving towards making a dent in the problem as opposed to it being something that, that we, we absolutely have to do. And I think that's what the idea of carbon productivity actually does. It takes us from, you know, we gotta deal with this waste to, hey, let's figure out some great things to do with this product. Capturing carbon from the waste emissions of flue gases and converting it into products is a $1 trillion opportunity. Carbon Clean Solutions, we help people remove the carbon dioxide from the black smoke coming out of power plants and chemical plants and manufacturing units and transform this carbon into something that could be sold into the market. We're the first company in the world to commercialize carbon dioxide based material that goes into making mattresses and chair seating. That's an incredible breakthrough in the so-called polyurethane industry. That's a way of making a material which traditionally would be 100% petrochemical based, but we're able to substitute 20% of that from a waste stream of carbon dioxide. We're creating new plastics, new fuels, new feedstocks, new building materials. Can we create bones and tables out of you know, the back of a power plant? I think that would be a tremendous development and, and really help remove the CO2 that, that we're putting into the atmosphere. You want to work on the product that's going to manifest an intention to solve the biggest issue facing humanity. Who doesn't want to do that?